Dad. Won't want any cheap stuff. Daniel said coldly, tossing the Father's Day gift onto his desk without even checking what was inside before throwing it into the trash. I didn't know why he assumed it was cheap, but watching him discard the gift I had chosen so carelessly was a huge shock. What are you saying? Tears welled up in my eyes as I shouted, but my outburst only seemed to make Daniel angrier. I was just doing what I was asked, getting a gift for Father's Day. The tears, born from frustration and sadness, wouldn't stop. Unexpectedly, the person who came to my rescue was someone I hadn't expected. My name is Emily Johnson, 32 years old. I've been married to Daniel for five years. We met at work and eventually got married. We both wanted to focus on our careers, so we decided not to have kids for now. One of the reasons we've been so career-driven is because we're saving up to build our dream home. That's why we both work and save as much as we can. We need to enjoy life a little more. Daniel would say that to me, but I could easily sacrifice buying new clothes or even staying up late cooking to save for the house. But Daniel, on the other hand, couldn't give up his more extravagant lifestyle. He kept buying expensive snacks from convenience stores and had no intention of quitting smoking. We decided to keep our finances separate, each managing their own income but splitting shared expenses. We didn't know each other's exact incomes, but since we worked at the same company, we had a general idea. I had been urging Daniel to combine our finances for months, but he consistently refused. He wanted to spend freely while I was saving every penny. Our vastly different approaches to money management started creating tension in our marriage. Another cheat meal, huh? Daniel sighed as he looked at the dinner I prepared clearly unimpressed. How many times had he dismissed my frugality with that same disdainful tone? I just wanted to save money for our dream home, but every time I made an effort, Daniel criticized it. If you don't like it, then make it yourself. My voice grew sharp with frustration. I'm fine with grabbing a sandwich from a supermarket on my way to work, but you're the one making a big deal out of it, calling it a waste. Because it is a waste. You can make a meal at home for a fraction of the cost. A sandwich costs hundreds of dollars by comparison. Well, I'm not as cheap as you are. Daniel grabbed his wallet and stormed out of the house without saying another word. Once again, we'd fought over money. How many times this week had we argued? In the beginning, I could overlook Daniel's spending habits, but lately, they had started to bother me. While I was doing everything I could to save, he seemed to be spending without a care in the world. When are we ever going to build our house at this rate? I sighed, covering the untouched breakfast and putting it away. At some point in Daniel's mind, I had become a penny-pinching wife, obsessed with saving every dollar. Father's Day is coming up, right? Don't forget to get something decent this year. Daniel said this as he glanced at the calendar while we were having dinner. Every year, I was the one to buy his parents gifts for both Mother's and Father's Day. Meanwhile, Daniel never bought anything for my parents. So every year, I had to buy gifts for four people, both sets of parents. Don't mess it up like Mother's Day. Get something nice for Dad this time. Daniel chuckled, clearly thinking he was being funny, but his comment only angered me. For Mother's Day, I had picked out a gourmet cake, which his mother had loved but Daniel had wanted to give jewelry instead. He had complained endlessly until the gift was delivered. If he was going to be so picky, why didn't he just choose it himself? But of course, Daniel was too busy to bother. I have my own job, but somehow, I'm always the one who ends up picking out the gifts. You're just going to complain again, aren't you? Just make sure it's not something cheap. His tone was getting increasingly irritated as it always did when we talked about gifts. I sighed deeply. This is why I hate this time of year. Daniel always left the shopping to me, but would never hesitate to criticize my choices. Despite my frustrations, I did what he asked and began researching Father's Day gifts online. I thought something consumable like cake would be a good idea, but Daniel hated it. I muttered to myself while scrolling through my phone, searching for ideas. I looked at the time, it was already 12.30 a.m. I need to go to bed. I've got work tomorrow. 
Exhausted, I turned off the lights and laid down in bed, hearing Daniel snore in the next room, completely carefree. For the past three nights, I had been staying up late trying to find the perfect gift. This watch looks good. I whispered to myself during a break at work, browsing for a gift. Daniel can't complain about this one. It's expensive enough. I wasn't about to let him accuse me of being cheap again. I should probably see it in person, though. I'll check it out this weekend. I didn't want to risk ordering something online that wouldn't meet Daniel's standards. But I wasn't sure if the watch would suit his father, so I decided to consult with his mom first. I'm thinking of getting your husband a watch for Father's Day. What do you think? I sent her the link to the product, and she responded quickly. That's a lovely gift. Thank you for always being so thoughtful. He'll love anything you choose, but please don't feel pressured to get something too fancy. Her kindness made me wish Daniel had inherited some of it. After getting her approval, I decided to head to the store that weekend to see the watch in person. I'm heading out now. Okay, have fun. I'm going to get your dad's gift. Aren't you coming? I couldn't help but say it, frustrated that he wasn't willing to help. I'm tired. I just want to relax at home. I left the house without another word, knowing it was pointless to argue. I arrived home around 7 p.m. after spending the day at the store. I'm back. I placed the bag with the gift on the living room table. What took you so long? I'm starving. Daniel grumbled from the couch, where he'd been lying all day. He hadn't moved an inch since I left that morning. You're an adult. If you're hungry, make yourself something to eat. I couldn't believe I was being scolded after spending the entire day picking out a gift for his dad. It's just a gift. You could have ordered it online. What's the big deal? I wanted to make sure I got something good, so I went to the store in person. Why are you giving me a hard time? I let out all my frustration, not holding anything back. Daniel was clearly surprised by my outburst. So what did you get? He asked, trying to change the subject as he pointed to the bag. Here. I hesitated as I handed him the watch, unsure if he'd like it. Daniel glanced at it, barely paying attention, and tossed it into the trash. I told you, I didn't want cheap gifts. He stormed out of the room, leaving me stunned and speechless. I couldn't believe what I had just witnessed. Tears started streaming down my face again as the shock settled in. What do you think you were doing? Do you even know how much thought I put into choosing that gift? My voice cracked with anger and hurt. It's Father's Day. You don't give cheap stuff like that. It embarrassed me in front of my dad. Daniel snapped back, heading towards the bedroom. How can you say that without even knowing what's inside? You didn't even check. I shouted at his back as he walked away, but Daniel turned around, just as furious. I can tell by looking. The cheap wrapping, the cheap bag... It's exactly the kind of thing you'd buy. With that, Daniel slammed the bedroom door shut behind him. Left alone, in the living room, I cried. Just then, the front door opened, and in walked Daniel's mother, Karen. Emily, what's going on here? Karen rushed over to me, concern written all over her face. Mom, what are you doing here? What did you do to Emily? Ignoring Daniel's question, Karen headed straight for the trash can. Is this the gift? She pulled the gift out of the trash and placed it carefully on the table. Wait, how did you know about the gift? Daniel looked bewildered as his mother's knowledge of the gift sank in. I asked her for advice. I didn't want you to complain again, so I made sure to consult with your mom. I wiped my tears and began explaining everything to Karen. Emily put so much effort into choosing this. You should be ashamed. Karen placed the gift on the table with care, her voice filled with disappointment. But it's still cheap, right? There's no way this is good enough for Dad. How can you say that without even looking at what's inside? Karen snapped, her voice rising in anger. It was the first time I'd ever seen her this upset. She tore off the wrapping paper, revealing a box with the Rolex logo clearly visible. A Rolex? Daniel's face turned pale as he saw the brand. That's right. Emily went all out this time because you complained so much about the last gift, and you threw it in the trash without even looking. Daniel stood there, looking like a scolded child. 
I couldn't help but chuckle a little at the sight. Where did you even get the money for this? You're always talking about saving money, acting like we're poor. I've been saving for this gift. Just because I'm careful with money doesn't mean I don't know how to spend it when it matters. I spoke with a mix of pride and frustration. Daniel, looking defeated, muttered under his breath, I would have preferred spending that money on something fun like a trip or eating out. He muttered, sulking as he slumped back into the couch. How can you still be saying things like that? Karen yelled, furious. Daniel quickly sat up straight, startled by his mother's tone. You have no idea how hard Emily's been working to save for your future. Karen scolded him harshly, while Daniel looked down, unable to meet her gaze. But I just wanted to do things together, like any married couple. That's why we save, right? Saving for the future doesn't mean you get to waste money on every whim. Karen's words cut through the air, leaving Daniel silent. The room grew quiet for a moment, until Karen spoke again, this time more softly. Daniel, you've never had to worry about managing money like Emily has. You just hand over your paycheck and think that's enough, but it's not. Do you know how much it really costs to build a home? Daniel finally seemed to understand the gravity of the situation. I, I didn't realize. You should be apologizing to Emily, not me. With that, the Father's Day drama seemed to come to a close, thanks to Karen's intervention. I'll be heading out now. Daniel, you should treat Emily better from now on. Karen stood up, ready to leave. Thank you for everything today. Please give my best to your husband. I stood up too, expressing my gratitude. Don't worry, dear. Us women have to stick together. Karen gave me a warm smile as she gathered her things to leave. Despite all the horror stories I'd heard about in-law relationships, I was fortunate. Karen had always treated me more like a daughter than a daughter-in-law. As she waved goodbye and left, Daniel's tone suddenly turned nasty again. Why was my mom even here? Why did you go behind my back like that? You're so sneaky. Daniel spat at me, his temper flaring the moment his mother was out of earshot. I didn't tell her to come just to get you in trouble. She wanted to help. My calm reply only seemed to fuel his anger. Shut up. If you'd told me from the start that the gift was a Rolex, none of this would have happened. You're the one making everything complicated. Daniel was losing control, yelling louder now. You just assumed it was cheap without even checking. How was I supposed to deal with that? It's your fault my mom yelled at me. You've completely ruined my reputation. What are you going to do about that? I stood there quietly, letting him rage on. At that moment, something inside me clicked. I couldn't do this anymore. Sorry, I should have made it more obvious it was expensive. I said with a forced smile, but in my mind, I had already made up my mind. I turned on the recording function on my phone, ready to capture whatever came next. Why are you smiling? This is serious. I don't think I can trust you anymore. Maybe we should just get a divorce. Daniel said it without realizing he was being recorded. Yeah, I think I'm done with your selfishness, too. I replied calmly, walking towards my bedroom as Daniel continued to yell from behind. His angry words didn't matter to me anymore. I was already planning my next move. I lay on my bed, phone in hand, and sent Karen the recording. Within minutes, she replied, We'll be over this Sunday. I'm bringing my husband with me. The message was short but clear. Karen was just as furious as I was. I spent the next few days preparing for Sunday, recording any new outbursts from Daniel just in case, and I didn't tell him about his parents' upcoming visit. Sunday came, and as usual, Daniel was lounging on the couch, flipping through channels. The doorbell rang. Someone's at the door, he mumbled, clearly uninterested in answering it. I, however, was more than ready. I'll get it. I said cheerfully as I made my way to the door. Emily, we're here. Karen walked in confidently, followed closely by Daniel's father, Mike. Hearing his parents' voices, Daniel rushed to the door, shocked. Mom, Dad, what are you doing here? His face turned pale as he saw both of them standing in the hallway. We're here to have a word with you, son. Mike's tone was calm but firm, and Daniel looked confused. What? What's going on? Did Emily do something behind my back again? Don't you dare speak about your wife like that. 
Mike's voice boomed through the room, startling Daniel. He had never seen his father this angry before. I've heard enough from your mother about how you've been treating Emily. What's your excuse? Wait, wait. I know I messed up with the Father's Day gift, but I've already apologized to Mom. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Daniel stammered, trying to explain himself. I'm not talking about the gift, son. I'm talking about the way you've treated your wife, your threats of divorce. Mike's stern look made Daniel's face drain of color. I took the opportunity to pull out my phone and play the recording. Why are you smiling? This is serious. I don't think I can trust you anymore. Maybe we should just get a divorce. Daniel's own words echoed in the room. He grimaced as the truth of his words hit him. This isn't just about a gift, Daniel. You've been threatening me, belittling me, and now you want a divorce? Well, I think that's a good idea. I said, feeling a wave of confidence wash over me. Daniel was speechless, his eyes darting between me and his parents. Divorce? Really, Daniel? After everything Emily has done for you? Karen stepped in, explaining the Father's Day fiasco to Mike. As she recounted the events, Daniel tried to interject. Look, look, that's enough. We don't need to drag all this out again. It's not enough. You've been acting like a selfish brat, and now you're facing the consequences. Mike's booming voice silenced Daniel. Emily, I'm truly sorry for how my son has treated you. If you want to proceed with the divorce, we'll support you. His words surprised not only me, but also Daniel. Wait, I didn't expect you both to help me with the divorce. I just wanted Daniel to be held accountable. Yeah, you can't just side with her on this. Parents don't usually help their daughter-in-law with the divorce. Normally, no, we wouldn't. But you've given us no choice. You've been hurting Emily, and we can't stand by and let that happen anymore. Mike's firm stance left Daniel looking cornered. Emily, if you have any questions, just let us know. We'll make sure Daniel doesn't make this any harder on you. I just want a fair split of our savings, that's all. No other demands. Wait a minute. I've contributed more to those savings. Why should it be split evenly? Daniel burst out, clearly upset by the thought. We're married, Daniel. The money belongs to both of us. It's called marital property. I calmly explained, as if I was talking to a child. I don't care. It's not fair. Daniel raged, stepping closer to me, but Mike quickly intervened. Emily's right, and frankly, after everything you've done... I think she deserves more than just half. Mike turned to me with a sympathetic look. I insist you take the full amount, Emily. Consider it an apology on our behalf. I was stunned. That's not necessary. I only want what's fair. Half is fine. I tried to reassure them, but Mike shook his head firmly. Mike's right. This is the least we can do for you. Even Karen backed up her husband. This is ridiculous. How can you guys do this to me? Daniel looked like he was about to cry. After everything you've done, Daniel, you should consider yourself lucky we're not doing more. Now stop acting like a child. Daniel had no response, and his parents' decision was final. The divorce, which I feared would be messy, was wrapped up quickly with the support of my in-laws. Daniel, still furious, was dragged out of the house by his parents, leaving me alone in the quiet, peaceful home I had longed for. It felt surreal like I was in a dream. I pinched my cheeks to make sure it wasn't. It hurt. I had just divorced a man who had undermined all my efforts to build a future. After the divorce, I shifted my goals. Instead of saving for a house, I was now planning to travel the world. I hadn't touched the money Daniel's parents had insisted I take. I wanted to save it for the future. For now, I was still focused on work and saving, much like before. But now... The freedom I felt was exhilarating, and between you and me, a promotion might be in the works. Life after Daniel was better than I had ever imagined.